Hi everyone and welcome back to this special Sonic Academy video with me, Chris Agnelli, in the first look of Logic Pro 10. Uh, we've had a quick look at the functions and buttons along the top and I kind of think we've kind of discovered it's not a total radical rethink, it's different. Uh, I've kind of, mm, I'm getting used to this GUI and kind of starting to warm to it. Uh, I think I like it, uh, but there you go, that's that's Mac fanboys for you. Uh, let's have a look at some other additional things uh, that are kind of relevant to us guys, us electronic dance music producers. And I think while the drum kits will be good, because I've used uh, Easy Drummer and stuff in a few tracks, and I've seen videos of Sebastian Grosso and stuff using it, you know, it's good for those big wacky snares. Uh, we'll look at the drummer stuff uh, in a little while. Because it's still downloading <laughs> content there. But one area that's really pricked my ears up and I really want to look at is this new slot we have here called MIDI effects and audio effects. So like inserting a compressor over a ES2, we can now insert MIDI effects. And here we have a drop down list. We have an arpeggiator, a chord trigger, modifier, modulator, note repeater, randomizer, scripter, transposer, and velocity processors. So, like inserting a compressor over a, an instrument, we can now insert a MIDI effects. Um, we have a drop down menu here. We have an arpeggiator, chord trigger, modifier, modulator, note repeater, randomizer, scripter, transposer velocity processor. I've just spent the last few minutes just quickly flicking through and trying to really get uh, to grips with what these guys do. So let's open up an ES2. Yeah, let's just have that. And let's switch on our arpeggiator. And the first thing that I noticed, there's a real <clears throat> retro feel to these and I really loved it. Uh, it was kind of reminds me of the Valhalla. There's a softness to the graphical use of user interface. Kind of like blurriness. So Logic has been crying out where uh, other programs have excelled in, in these sort of beat repeaters and arpeggiators. Logic has been sadly lacking in the last few years and at last they've addressed the situation. So what have we got? So let's hold one note. And that's our rate. Uh, and these are velocities. I presume this is like a step sequencer. Let's do and let's go up a range. And we can vary it, have a variation on the pattern. We have MIDI controllers, keyboard we can set scale to major scale, so I'm going to play a minor chord and see what happens. Yeah, so I'm hitting, I'm hitting uh, D sharp but it's, it's, it's making the arpeggiator make, play C major. Bit of a swing. We can change the note length. Let's make it. Uh, 
And let's... Let's have velocity, open it up, cut off, filter one and two. Let's see if we can get a nice sort of twangy bass going. So that'd probably be a trancy bass, is there one there? So let's make that velocity. Haven't quite worked out what these guys do, but uh, I'll go and read up on it. I'm sure I'll discover. But and there's some, you know, different chord complex grooves in there. So I'm hitting that live, you can see, if I hit one note quite softly, we can see the velocity here. Now if I hit it harder, if I hit the second notes, first note hard, second note soft, you'll see these two light up. And notes three and four. So that's live, I'm, I'm playing that. And this is great, we can draw it in then. And clicking on that would switch it off. So, yep, lots of interesting things going on there. Let's go quickly through the rest of the stuff. Chord trigger. Uh, uh, we have C minor selected somewhere. Uh, not 100% sure where. But these are learned, so we can learn uh, chords. So this is a chord I'm inputting, and you'll see the red button in C2. If I hit that, it'll play back that chord for me. So that's chord trigger, so we can input uh, different chords uh, into that and play them back in one note. Modifier. is we're modifying velocity. So I'm turning the velocity down, up, I'm adding to it, I'm subtracting from it. So it'd be good for arpeggiated bass lines. It's like an LFO. So yeah, just a standard LFO square wave. Sample and hold. Uh, so you can see it's putting a bend on the note. Not 100% sure where I would use that. Note repeater, almost like a MIDI delay. So we can have it going up a scale, faster, transposing up 7. So you might 
might get some interesting, uh, you know, that's kind of what we were doing there. <laughs> might be interesting in some sort of noises. Uh, randomizer will randomize the velocity. So if I, I'm kind of trying to hit that at the same velocity, but this is randomizing it. So if you're a trance head like me uh, and you want some really good RP basses where they're, you know, the, the twangs kind of give you the groove. You could record that in and I'm sure you get some good. Scripter, I don't know. I think it's uh, uh, open in editor. I'm not even going to go there. So don't worry about that. Uh, transposer. Uh, this will, can't go wrong. This will set everything to C major. If I hit C sharp. Still hits a C, I'm hitting C, it's hitting a C, C sharp, hitting a G. So we can play, for those that don't sort of understand scales, we can play melodies and we'll never hit a wrong note. And velocity processor. Probably it's like a compressor for, for notes. So you can squeeze your lowest note and your highest note squeeze it together compress the midi velocities rather than the actual sound the actual output velocities so there's a quick overview of the uh midi effects uh really interesting that's going to open up a, f a whole new world of possibilities to me uh really excited about that uh, in the next video we're going to look at some other uh the bass designer and retro synths and just have a quick look at those guys